Did you ever just want to climb a tree with all your friends and scream? If so, you might be a cicada. Uh, I'm Jesse Rack from the Natural History Institute, and I'm about to tell you all about cicadas. Do you hear that sound in the trees? That is cicadas. They're very indicative of summer. If you live in a region where they come out, especially in Arizona, they often signal like, oh no, it's about to get really hot. Um, this is why. So cicadas on purpose go up in the trees and call in the hottest part of the day. And this is because it's a strategy to avoid predators. Not everybody's out right now. Most things are not out and so they're safe. So who is making the noise and what is the noise? So only the males call, as in many animal species, right? So the males are up there calling for the females. So the sound that cicadas make, primarily the loud noise you hear, is created by vibrating special membranes called timbals. So these are on their abdomen, kind of like on their back, you can imagine. They vibrate these organs and it creates, and because their body is essentially hollow, it creates a really loud noise, like much louder than you would expect. They also make some secondary noises, like vibrating their wings, or even rubbing one body part against another, something we call stridulation. That's how crickets make their noise. But those noises are not as loud as the sound of them vibrating their timbals to make this massive deafening noise. All right, let's go see if we can find a cicada and catch one so you can see it up close and I can tell you all about these cool little animals. I am already here, so I'm gonna start here. <laughs> oh, no, that's not a, that's not a cicada. <laughs> Success! We have found a cicada. This one flew down right in front of me and I was able to grab it. Um, so now I can talk a little bit more about the cicadas we have here in Prescott, Arizona and about kind of cicadas more broadly, which is fun to think about. So in the Prescott area, we have uh, somewhere around 15 species or even more of cicadas. Right now it's September, so it's late summer, early fall. And so the group that these ones belong to is called the dog day cicadas. Think of like the dog days of summer. Do you hear them all around me? So this is an adult cicada. Now, if you are from the East Coast or grew up in the East Coast or know anything about East Coast cicadas, you probably know they have these kind of huge cycles of cicada emergence. And that coincides with what kind of cicada it is. There are 17 year species, 11 year species, 13 year species. The ones we have here in Arizona tend to be annual cicadas, which means they come out every year. What those other lengths of time means, that's how long the cicada nymph, the baby cicada, lives underground before it emerges and becomes an adult like this. And I hope we can find a little exoskeleton so I can talk more about that process. So you can see on these cicadas, they have a couple of eyes on the head. As, as with any insect, they have head, a thorax, an abdomen, which is its belly. Um, they also have two stubby little short antennae. Um, they can't bite you, they can't hurt you. You can kind of see underneath here, I see, I don't know if you can see, there's a little straw. That's all they have. They suck plant juices. So if nothing else, maybe I can show you its underside. Um, you might feel a little poke if it tries to, oh, there you go. You can see its little straw for sucking plant juices. Um, you might feel a little poke if you try to hold a cicada. That's just it uh, trying to suck your plant juices. I've never known of it to break the skin. And then, of course, these cool transparent wings. So as young cicadas underground, the nymph stage, they don't have wings at all. This is kind of like, it works kind of like a butterfly. If you think about the caterpillar to butterfly situation, right? We call that metamorphosis. Same thing here. The cicada larvae underground is a little nymph just crawling around sucking tree roots, tree sap out of the roots. And then when it's time to molt, they climb out um, and I'll show you, I'll talk more about that process in a moment. Uh, and they shed that last skin one more time and then they emerge with these cool wings. Um, and first off, when they, they first come out as adults, the wings are all crumpled and it takes time to kind of pump blood into them. Uh, and then they eventually can harden and then carry them around. Adult cicadas only live probably three to four weeks, uh, not much longer than that, depends on the species. 
Um, and so their whole time above ground is just looking for a mate and feeding on plant juices and that's and just laying the females lay eggs. So the females will lay eggs in a little branch up in the trees and then that falls to the ground and the little babies hatch out and crawl right down underneath the soil. <laughs> That was all I needed. <laughs> On the hunt for cicada exoskeletons. <laughs> so what happens is when these babies come out of the ground, they crawl out and they'll climb a little trunk of a tree and that's where they'll do their final kind of molt and emerge as adults. So they leave these cool little exoskeletons hanging on to the tree trunk. Found a snail. I was kind of waiting for it to poke its head out. So snails are fun. I believe this is an invasive species, the real big garden snails, which doesn't make them not cute. It's still cute. Uh, so if it'll relax, it'll stick out its head a little bit. And so they have their eyeballs on stalks, which is really cool. Um, so they have two, two eyeballs on stalks and then they have two little tentacles. They're called their um, olfactory tentacles. That's what they smell with. Um, Snails also, they just like eat plant parts and they use a little, like a raspy tongue. Think of like a cat tongue, but even stronger. It's called a radula or like a rasp. They like rasp off plant parts um, and digest them. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. It's all happening. Whoa, there's his eyeballs and olfactory tentacles, I told you. So the end, these bulbs on the end of these stalks are its eyeballs. And these bottom ones, those are its olfactory tentacles. That's how it smells. So it kind of smells its way around the environment. Oh, it's peeking its way out. It's a little nervous. Also, fun fact, snails are neither male nor female. They're hermaphroditic, which means they're both, they have both male and female parts. So every snail can have eggs. Every snail can inseminate another snail. It's like magic. Ah, it stuck to me. Here you go, bud. Good luck. You got it? You gotta hold on, you're heavy. Hold on. Oh my God, you're really bad at being a snail. Hold, uh, hold on. Oh my God, what? <laughs> it's so long. Oh look, there's poop coming out. There's a little, that's where it poops out of. The poop hole. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Maybe a cloaca. Coming up on October 13th, we have a snail talk. It's called Getting to Know Your Slimy Neighbors, Arizona Native Snails, by Arizona Game and Fishes snail guy, Jeff Sorensen. So here we have a cicada exoskeleton. That is not a living being. It's just the shed outer skin, uh, if you will, of the cicada nymph as it crawled out of the ground. It climbed this tree and then the adult emerged out of its back. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Um, so baby cicadas live underground for a long time, uh, proportionally much longer than they live as adults uh, outside of the ground. So at, uh, in the East Coast, there are species that stay underground for years and years, sometimes up to 17 years. When they're ready, they crawl up out of the ground, grab a hold of something, and the back of their skin splits open. So I'm saying skin, I don't really mean skin. It's like their exoskeleton. Like we have a skin that's very stretchy and we can, it, it grows with us. So as we get bigger, our skin stretches. That's not true for insects. It's also not true for things like snakes, right? In order to get bigger, insects have to essentially take off their exoskeleton and then allow themselves to grow. So they're soft underneath. Um, and this final molt, so they do it several times as they're growing. They'll just like keep shedding their exoskeleton to get bigger like a snake does. Um, this final one is the important one because when they come out, they have wings. Evolutionarily, cicadas live underground for most of their life because it's just the safest place to be. There's not that many predators under the ground that could eat a giant bug like this. They grow a fresh skin underneath or a fresh exoskeleton underneath that's really soft and they take this old one off and then the soft one they can grow while they're, until it hardens so they can get a little bigger. Yeah. Another cool fact, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna kinda like pop this open a little bit. Do you see those weird strings in there? Can you see those strings? So that's interesting. Uh, that's actually 
they come from the insect's trachea. So essentially it's lungs. So if you think about it like a, like a snake skin, it sheds its whole skin. Same thing here, except insects don't have lungs like we do. They just have a series of breathing tubes called trachea. And so their entire surface sheds, which means that's the inside out tubes. That's the inside out breathing tubes that got shed also in order to grow. So, and then they just pull out and then they have fresh new breathing tubes. Wild. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something about cicadas. They're a really cool insect to look for and even catch if you can during the summers. So hope you like and subscribe. Come visit us at the Natural History Institute. Check out our videos. Mm -hmm.